Um, Luca was in here and he talked about not only focusing on basketball, but being able to have fun and have joy out there. As a person I've talked to about the human aspect of this, how do you feel about that and that translating on the court? Uh, yeah, I feel like, um, you can, maybe this is at home here. <laughs> uh, no, I feel like uh, when we're playing that way and playing very free, very liberated and having a good time out there, uh, not taking the game for granted, but just showering each other with positivity and doing the little things that that's the maturity that uh, we've shown, um, you know, post All-Star break, just being able to be there for each other on and off the court, off the court, more, most importantly, of just, um, you know, telling each other that we're going to be OK and just keep believing. And, um, you know, the, the text threads that, that we have, it just goes a long way just for uh, our emotions. You know, this is a new space for a lot of guys on the team, including myself as one of the leaders on the team. You know, this is one of the hardest series I've ever played. So, you know, just the focus level has to be at a, at a level that um, reflects that, you know, we have what it takes to win, but also uh, we understand that we're not going to get there without guys feeling like their best selves. And um, that's what we like to speak on is just being honest about the way we approach our games and, um, you know, knowing the difference when we're very much well connected and then also when uh, we're kind of splintered and the game is uh, flowing in a different direction and we're not uh, being there for each other enough or touching each other enough in our huddle. So um, we, we know the difference, we feel it. And I think tonight we, we showed each other again how to respond to tough losses. Yeah. Also, um, just to add on to that, um, how does it like, what's the emphasis to lead by example from both of you two? Uh, it's, it's something that, um, you know, we've been held accountable for since the beginning of the season by uh, Jay Kidd, uh, by Nico, by Michael Fenley. Um, you know, they told us from the beginning of the year that it was going to start with us and it was going <clears> to <throat> challenge us. This season was going to challenge us, uh, you know, to be better as leaders. You know, last year we, we knew all the voices that were kind of coming down on us, telling us that we weren't going to make it to the playoffs and we weren't going to do anything. So we know what it felt like to fail then. And then this season uh, we just had a great approach and next man up mentality. And, um, you know, once we made our trade, then we pretty much knew what we were striving for. And uh, the mission has been the same since then. So um, just doing the little things for each other and feeling good and, and smiling through the, the tough times. Kyrie, OKC gives up a lot of threes there in the corner. I think PJ was able to bench him off that um, in the last three games. And then tonight it was Derrick Jones Jr., especially in the first half. Um, just what did you see from him being able to step up and knock that shot down? Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of him, man. I'm, I'm, I'm proud of all our guys. Um, you know, but when you're getting that opportunity to be in the corner and get those open threes, we uh, have a lot of confidence that you'll knock it down. And it's going to be somebody's night every, every – uh, it's going to be somebody different. It's going to be somebody's night. Uh, wait, am I, how am I trying to say this? It's going to be, I'm over here like, yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be somebody. Yeah, you guys know what I'm saying, man. I'm sorry for the people at home. I haven't eaten yet, so my mind is a little discombobulated, man. Um, but yeah, it's going to be somebody's night every night. <laughs> I don't mean to uh, be smiling up here all this, but uh, yeah, for us, I think that's the strength of our team is our depth. And um, when we have guys making shots like that, it creates separation throughout the game. And it allows us to um, really just pace ourselves to a certain degree because they have to play us honestly. And uh, when our guys are making shots, especially uh, threes out of the corner or that wing, it creates a lot of opportunities for me and Luca to get downhill because they're, they're showing a lot of help. They're showing a lot of bodies. They're keeping somebody on me that's athletic, that's um, you know going to make it tough on me. So I don't mind giving myself up uh, in order to create all the opportunities for my teammates. And I like to see them do well. You mentioned this is one of the hardest series you've ever, you've ever played. Is it because of how they're defending you, throwing multiple bodies at you? Uh, I mean, it's just really just the pace and um, just the physicality. And you know, last series was physical, too, and the pace was a little different. But I think just this series is. It's challenged me physically, mentally, emotionally, and I've accepted that. And I've focused on the things that I can control and uh, focused on getting my guys going early. And, um, you know, however the game plays out, it's going to play out. But uh, I'm really laying my hat on the defensive end and giving a lot of effort and, and just trying to make the right plays offensively. Uh, you know, they're putting three on the ball at times for me. And, you know, I could obviously take a lot of tough shots. And I think that's coming in the near future when it's needed. But for right now, just reading the game and um, 
you know, allowing the, the basketball guys to, to shower me with, a, you know, a lot of love when uh, you're playing the right way, you know, because, again, I've, I've spoken on this a few times, but just internally as a young player, it's, it's, you know, when I was a little bit younger, it was easy for me to kind of throw away the good stuff that I was doing because I want to focus on my scoring. And I know how many people want me to focus on my scoring, right, that are not in the locker room. So don't want to fall into that trap, really want to focus on the, the positive uh, vibes that are given to me from my teammates. And they're going to find me when it's time, but I love finding them just as much. And when you can leave out of a, a tough environment like OKC with the win, you, you really got to um, you know celebrate that. And we obviously have two games in between, but you know we're going against the um, number one team in the West, and they're playing like it, man. So I got to give respect to those young guys. And they're going to bring it game six, and uh, we'll be prepared. How would you describe the defensive identity that you guys created really over the last six weeks of the season and then has carried over in the playoffs? Say that one more time. The defensive identity of this yeah, yeah. team? Uh, we've just grown, and we've allowed our our trust in one another skill sets to really flourish. Um, we have guys that enjoy defending, um, but they also get tired. So we're going to need our depth to really come through and really provide us with uh, that spark off the bench. You saw Jaden Hardy come in, and I'm so proud of that young guy tonight where he really gave us a lift off the bench. He was really aggressive, and it may not show up in the stat sheet that he was you know, shooting a bunch of shots. And, you know, He shot five shots. He was one for five. But I think for us, energy-wise, having that trust in him and him being so young in a semifinal playoff game, game five, it's, you know, it could go either way. Shows the trust that J.K. has him in as well. And, um, you know, there was just tremendous effort for him. And then everybody that came off the bench tonight gave us something that we needed in the game. And, uh, I mean, D-Live was a plus 22 tonight. And it, it just reflects uh, how we feel about each other when we're playing at that level where we can, um, you know, basically go out there in that game and, and just play basketball. Instead of worrying about the X's and O's, we just worry about playing basketball and our style of basketball. So I think that identity on the defensive end has really created um, an opportunity for us to really showcase our skill sets and showcase different guys doing the little things for us to win. When Luca came in here, you know, he, he basically said he made a point that there, he wasn't going to be complaining the rest tonight. He wasn't going to use any energy toward that. He wanted to focus on basketball and, and having fun playing basketball. That's good to hear. When he does that, what what difference do you see? Uh, I, I think, you know, he's just being smart and, um, you know, taking advice from the guys that have been in situations like this before and uh, trusting that we have his back. You know, some of the times when he's going to the refs, he really feels like that's an individual thing, and I think he could speak on it too. He's just he's in the moment. He's very emotional, as we all are as competitors. But, um, you know, the, the bigger picture is what matters, and him – focusing his energy on the right places and, you know, specifically focusing on his shots and also doing the little things for us on the defensive end, getting rebounds like he's doing and he's been doing all season, it works well for us. So, you know, I think he can um, learn from this tonight as well as all of us and, um, you know, just continue to affirm to himself that when he is focused on just his game and he's focused on doing the right things, then we flourish as a team. So, again, I'm not going to sit up here and complain about him when he gets on the refs like the refs are perfect either. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> you know, I, mean? I got to give my brother a little benefit of the doubt. You know, sometimes it is warranted to get on the guys that are refereeing the game. But, um, you know, I think he found a, a healthy balance tonight where he was just really focused on getting us going offensively and uh, making the right plays and making sure that we uh, – kept our foot on the gas pedal. That, that's one thing that he's done uh, as an engine on this team. You know, if one of the engines, one of the leaders of just keeping us calm, keeping us poised. They, uh, they scored a playoff low, 92 points. But post game, they seem to like, you know, a lot of the shots that they got. They seem, you know, they, they said their process was pretty good. I'm just curious, you know, from your side defen defensively, I mean, did you feel like you guys had a, a good sharp night or was some of them missing shots? I mean, basketball is an imperfect game. And, you know, after you look at it, uh, once you look at the film, I think you'll find the answers. But, um, you know, based off how we feel after the game, that could that could be one thing. You know, I look at it, oh, I felt like when we were out there just uh, really managing the game well and managing the lead, that was a good space for us to be in. And it was all created from our defensive uh, stops. So when we're getting out in transition and they're not able to get back or we see a lot of mismatches, mismatches um, you know, that works in our favor. And then... You know, when we know how <laughs> skilled Shea is and he played 42 minutes tonight, um, you know, so he was given a lot of effort on that end. We knew that we had to take advantage 
of different opportunities on him on the defensive end and uh, putting him in oper- you know spaces where uh, he was either going to foul or he was either going to get a block or um, one of our bigs were going to score. So, um, you know, we we're just trying to utilize our overall skill set and depth of just making sure that we continue to push the ball. And, um, you know, the most well-conditioned team usually wins the series and doing the little things consistently. So we felt like we're in a good place, but uh, we could still get better. Uh, Kai, you, uh, well, you don't mind me calling you Kai. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm bad. We're a little mountain. Hey, uh, yeah. uh, you know, a sentiment that's kind of been echoed, you know, with some of the young guys is, um, you know, a sense of calm heading into games like this, you know, game change, the game deciding uh, games in a series like this. Um, when you look back to, you know, even when you were entering the league or and even now where you are dealing with the ruckus of the crowd like you were talking about, I mean, what has that leadership role been with some of the younger guys in the, in the locker room to, you know, keep them level-headed? And, you know, how do you even still try to keep that same mindset for yourself nowadays? Yeah, I, I genuinely try to give our guys positive affirmations. And, you know, even when we lost the other night, I – took a lot of the accountability for how the game ended uh, just because I felt like there were some shots that I rushed. They were good shots, but I just felt like I um, did, I got to my spot and I wasn't really focused on making it enough. And, you know, just knowing that I, I have a, a sense of, of peace about me and also I can consistently stay poised even if, you know, we're in a crazy environment. This is just something that has been a skill set of mine, right? So I think they look to me for that sense of calmness, right? That sense of peace. And when we come into games like this, I don't want them to feel like it's it's a game five. It's it's really just going to be a tough, hard-nosed game where we're going to be required to do the right things and the little things and be confident and also speak to your teammates confidently as well. These games can go either way. And win, lose, or draw, I tell them that they're my brothers. So there's no pressure on us to consistently be perfect. It's going to be an imperfect game. I try to prepare them as best I can. And I also try to allow them to experience it firsthand as a leader. You know, you got to allow them to make those mistakes and then learn from it. Um, so that's what I, I just can stay consistent on as best I can is affirming to them that it's going to be tough. It's going to be hard. So just embrace it. Embrace the nerves, embrace the anxiety, and embrace the, the fears that you may have. But once we leave out of this huddle, we're together. So you're never going to feel alone out there. And if you do, just flag down one of the veterans, flag down one of the guys that give you that um, you know, positivity and, and just move on. You know, Because turnovers, just like the other night or just the pace of the game, we splintered you know, and, and we felt that. And we looked at the tape and we didn't want that to be the feeling that we had again coming into the locker room. You know, we were up 14 and, you know, and then we we're up eight and then we we're up six and then we we're up three and then Dort hits a big three and then now the crowd's out of it and now we're looking like we don't want to push the ball up as much as possible. So we just got to stay aggressive and continue to win the quarters. And that's the focus. Other than the two throwaways there at the end of the season, you guys haven't lost two in a row in forever. Mm. Uh, what kind of source of pride is that? And is that a product of tweaks from the coaching staff or just you guys, the resiliency, or, or how, what do you attribute that to? Uh, I attribute that to our uh, team environment that we've created, you know, from the top of our you know hierarchy, our GM, our president, um, our governors, all the way down to the culture that we're creating as players and the coaching staff with Jay Kidd leading his guys. You know, everybody has a specific role that they play on this team, and uh, we do our best to collaborate on some of our ideas and we try to give each other a lot of confidence to continue to do uh, the things that we work on and you know when that happens I feel like good things can um, create opportunities and that could lead to success or failure so for us we're just really uh, feeling like we're in the trenches together in the foxhole together and when we go out there and and we're able to play a, a game you know, in a you know 24 hour span or 48 hour span, and we have to respond that way. I feel like we do a good job of connecting and making sure that we're honest with each other, and um, you know th- those things go a long way, especially when somebody's in a new experience or a new opportunity like the playoffs, like the semifinals. Thanks, guys. Yeah, guys. Thank you. Let me get some food, man.